All right, so welcome everyone. Today we are going to be going over the music system in Manifold Garden. I'm going to be showcasing uh, how the code is structured, how the system works, the debug tools we've written, and sort of like how we've chosen to organize music in the game. So before we get started, I am going to do a quick demo of uh, music in the game. So I am going to skip ahead a bit to this area since that's where the music starts. And I'm going to turn off my mic. So then what we'll do is we'll, we'll actually run through it again after and I, I'll talk a bit about uh, what's going on. So we'll, we'll play through the game, this part, then I'm going to jump inside the editor, show how we place things and, and explain uh, how that's set up and then we'll go into the code. All right, so the uh, you guys probably saw the frame rate. Uh, yeah, the work, the game is work in progress. So it looks like, uh, by the way, the particle uh, volume manager is a little goofed. The okay, so let's talk about what's going on here. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. So this is the the zero 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 level. And also, let me just clarify the frame rate. It looked not great. Uh, part of that is in the editor, and part of it is we're tracking all the like performance uh, numbers and all that. Uh, and then also the uh, like we're still we're kind of experimenting with some performance techniques. So. Uh, but anyway, we have here a couple of these triggers that the player walks into, which sets the parameter for the music. So you can see here, there's a trigger. So actually, you know what? Before we do that, let me open up uh, Fmine. So let me show you guys, here's the music. So this music is real, this is the track, okay? So there's... This is how it's set up. I guess there's a couple, there's a bunch of layers, and then we have these parameters which we use to uh, control the intensity of the music. So here, that's the song that's playing. Now you can, so the initial value is actually 30. Uh, Oh wait, I didn't have a desktop audio enabled. Okay, so you know, let's bring this down. All right, so this is the music setup in Fmod. We've got the music. When we start, this value is actually set to 30. And then, uh, you know, as you walk forward towards the edge of the platform it goes up I think to about 45 
And then when you cross, when you fall off and cross to the other side, I think we bring it up to about 60. I wonder if it does sound a little different. This is this is the old old music. Um, it doesn't play anyway. So what we you can see here, we've got this um, one trigger here that's setting the trigger value. Oh, I guess it's actually set to twenty. No. So when the first, when the player first comes out, it sets it to thirty. Then when they like walk forward a bit, it sets it to thirty-five. Then forty. Um, the number is right here. We have it, the code auto names it. So if we change the, um, if we change the numbers here, it actually just updates it. So then when we look at all the music parameters in the scene, we can see, you know, both you got going on there. Um, and then finally it gets 45. Now when you fall, when the player falls and kind of crosses over, they'll touch that trigger which brings it up to 74. I it used to be 66, which is why it said 66 only, but yeah, this is 74. Um, now currently I think there's a this is something that we'll we'll still need to work on, but when you go into the other level it actually starts turning it off uh, while it plays the the separate stinger. Let me go to yeah, open up the uh, the next scene. Yeah, so the gaps between the triggers are intentional. They're not um, yeah, I suppose in theory we could have we we could have triggers all over the place, but um, it's not really necessary. No, I mean you could you could skip it. It would just be like a maybe more intense, uh, faster rise. This level there's a ton of geometry, so this level is always super slow. So when this starts to trigger, and you can see at the same time, when you walk inside, it actually brings it to 299. I wonder, I do feel like maybe the, I actually think the trigger can maybe be brought in a little bit closer here. I don't think it needs to be, I think mostly it's the, the timing of it could Could do with a little modification. All right, so we've got these these triggers in the game that sends messages. So okay, so let's let's talk about how we are organizing music. Uh, so you know these are all the two scenes I showed you. That was uh, World Zero Zero and World Zero 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 One. Now. In the editor, they are two different scenes. You can see this is world 000001, and the other scene was world 000. Um, in the game, they are intended as one space, like this is the interior of the tower you see in world 000. Um, but from a development standpoint, we have to split them up into two scenes. Like that's just how we pull off the weird tricks and there are portals connecting them. Uh, so for internally, we've got this map to help us track, you know, which levels are connected to which. You could like, this is how things are connected. This is a tool that shows the portal connection. So you can see here, you know, world zero zero. Well, zero zero one, they're connected together using an orange gravity portal. Uh, 
Uh, but the division in, in spaces into scenes is more uh, because we need to do that from development standpoint. For the player, we want all the spaces to seem seamless. Uh, so like in our very first version of the music, we kind of had music synced to each level. So we'd have like this level would have its own music and then this level would have its own music, this level would have its own music. The problem was that meant when you walked from one level to another, you'd hear a piece of music fade out and then another fade back, another piece of music fade in. And that meant like around the doors, there was always this gap of silence, which just felt really weird. And it kind of, it broke up the spaces more than we liked it to. Uh, so instead of having music synced up to lesson um, levels, what we actually have is this idea of the music sentence. So that's what these blue lines or I just drew this in Photoshop. It was like to, yeah, again, this was just for us internally. Um, but the a music sentence that could be composed of several pieces of music and it spans across levels, right? So, you know, it might be made up of like tracks A, B, and C. It starts when you're in zero, zero, then like another, you know, B is a stinger that comes in when A reaches the, the climax and then like it just fades out into C, which continues for a bit. Um, there are music sentences that are just in a level. Uh, World 001 is like, um, this is a level with a bunch of puzzles. And so the idea is that when you solve each sequence of a puzzle, there's one layer of the music that comes in and then they all tie together. Um, but in, so there are music sentences that are limited to just one level, but uh, for the most part, they're they start in one level and end in another. Okay, so let's jump into the code. It's on the right time. Man, everything's really slow today. Okay, so this is this is the ultimate music manager. The ultimate is just we. <laughs> the first version of the game had its own music manager, and then at some point it was like, okay, wait, I decided to rewrite everything, and I didn't want it to conflict with the older version, so I decided to just add. I just needed a word in front of it. And I just thought of ultimate. So the ultimate part just means it's like the the the. Music Manager 2.0, really 3.0 at this point. Uh, so this is a manager. It's initial initialized along with all the other managers in the game. This is the game manager. You know when the it's like the first thing that one of the first thing that's called when the game starts up. It sets up localization, uh, level loading, sound, music. So it gets it gets set up uh, at the very beginning, and. You can see here we have the music sentences set up as enums. Um, sorry, so most of them are named after levels, uh, but you can see some there. It's like, okay, that's starting in this one, going to there. The idle and explore music, that one is a little bit unique. That one is treated differently. That one is sort of like a global music sentence. That's music, idle music that plays when the player has been standing still for about. 30 to 90 seconds and explore as if there's no other music playing, but you've been walking around for a bit, then we kind of play that. I think the our inspiration for that was uh, uh, Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild. Okay, so anyway, these are all the music. And this isn't finished, by the way. It's still, like, we're still adding more music. This is, we just mostly going over the architecture at the moment. So if we wanted that, you know, additional music which is at the enum here um okay so this is uh it's got data that you can save these are the instance inside ultimate music manager so what we consider a music sentence it's actually um we have this thing called music tracker group which i will come back to in a bit um 
Let me see what is a good place to do. Actually, you know what? We should we should start talking about the music trackers first. Okay, so this is this is the ultimate music manager, and we will return. But first, let's talk about and we've we've introduced the idea of music sentence. Um and we will talk about music tracker groups and music tracker now. So so music, the idea of the music sentence is we wanted music not to be um not to have like a one-to-one -one pairing to levels. Uh, so that's that's kind of where that idea came from. So here we go. Let's talk about music tracker. Where is the code for a music tracker? Oh yeah, I put it in a separate script. Okay. So uh, music tracker handles one F mod sound emitter, which we have a wrapper called ultimate sound emitter. Uh, basically in F mod, you can see these are all events. So every piece of music is one F mod event. And we have our own custom wrapper called ultimate sound emitter. And what this does is it just handles uh, instantiating uh, FMOD sound emitters, releasing them. Because if you if you use FMOD and not the native Unity uh, music system, you do have to instantiate it and release it. You do have to manage all that. And so this is just kind of our way of not having to deal with a bunch of that um, boilerplate work. And also uh, give us some like tools to help debug. So, for example, here we can actually classify which sound emitter type, and that lets us in the game. You can see like how many gravity cube sounds are playing, how many color change beam sounds are playing, uh, so on and so forth. So, basically, each ultimate sound emitter handles one F mod event. And then ultimate each music tracker handles one ultimate sound emitter. And the reason why we don't just use the ultimate sound emitter directly is because the ultimate sound emitters are also used for sound effects. Uh, but music has some different uh, requirements than sound effects. For example, uh, one of the things that music tracker lets us do is remember the timeline. So we can we store, um, you know, how far the music's played. And that way, if you come back to a level uh, that you've been in before or you like load a saved game, it can remember where the music had gone to instead of always starting from the beginning. Some places we do want it to start from the beginning. Some places we don't. Uh, this lets us handle that. Okay, so let me talk about the music tracker. Um, save data, so that's the path, fmod event path. The name of the sound emitter. This is for us to debug. So when something goes wrong, um, if something sounds weird, we can bring up the debug panel, which I'll show later, and that will let us know, like, okay, you know, uh, this is the sound that's currently playing. Otherwise, it's uh, just kind of nearly impossible to figure out what's what's going on. Yeah, music, debugging music and sound is a real pain. Um, the name of the music track group. So we have, like, like I said, one ultimate sound emitter handles one F mod event, is synced to one, uh, responsible for one F mod event, and a music tracker is linked to one ultimate sound emitter. But then what we'll do is we'll have a bunch of music trackers to form a music tracker group, and that is a music sentence. So music tracker group is a music sentence. Um, so that's the group parent. The music sentence, really, that's more for naming. Does track want to play music? This is, okay. So this lets us know whether we are, so, so we've got music that's playing and then sometimes we'll fade it out. That means it no longer wants to play, it's on its way out. Uh, has it been initialized? Was it stopped using debug? So we've got, we've got debug tools that can turn on or off music and when you stop a piece of music using debug that behaves differently than when it's stopped naturally in the game. For example, if you want to stop it using the debug tools, it has to stop instantly. I don't know if we do it instantly, but, it, but that, that's sort of one of the things that, that would be different. Or like 
because it's a our debug tool would have a bunch of checkboxes, and you can check whether you want to hear music or not. Um, so you can like check and uncheck music and start and restart it, which is not something that happens naturally in the game. So we had to write some other uh, functions to deal with that. Uh, this is whether it's a one shot or not. FMOD actually has, you can do the FMOD run manager and call it one shot. And what that does is it instantiates the music, plays it, and once it's done, it will automatically release it. The reason why we don't like using FMOD one shot is it does not get tracked by our debug system. Like, you know, our debug system will list every single uh, sound effect and music that's currently playing, but you have to call it using uh, our wrappers. If you were to just call the FMOD run manager play one shot directly, uh, that doesn't get included. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh yeah, so this is the, the like I said, the sound emitter. Uh, Music often have parameters, so as I showed you here with uh, 001, we've got a bunch of uh, parameters that you can tweak to make the, to adjust the intensity. We also, every music has uh, its own music off parameter uh, that starts at zero. You can hear the music when it goes to one, then the music is off. Uh, that's what we use for fading out the music. Oh yeah, this is actually done. Aaron, I think you did not uh, comment this one. <laughs> so, constructor, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so initializes the sound emitter. Right, okay, so that's just uh, initializing the ultimate sound emitter. And then what it does is it also gets uh, the parameters. So I guess you can get it from this is a fmod API. You can get the number of parameters, or at least you can get the um, you get the number of them as well as the name. And then what we do is we just uh, get the order. So you know, zero, one, two, three, and we find out which one is the music off, and that's we store that in the music off parameter. And then there are also Parameters that affect the entire music sentence. This one is a, is a little bit tricky. I'm not crazy about the way we've implemented this, but basically, like I said, your music tracker group has multiple music trackers, so there's multiple pieces of music. And the, we, the best way we found is actually to store the parameters at the group level and then pass that down to the music trackers uh, it is taking advantage of the fact that if you give a parameter to a music that doesn't use that parameter, it makes no difference. So it, this, like, the way we've set it up, it will pass parameters to all of the music trackers, even though it's not needed. But it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect them. Uh, release sound emitter. So again. As I mentioned, you have to you have to release it. Play music from beginning. Now, I think we the way we do it uh, so that we don't have everything in memory is we actually initialize the sound just as we're about to play. I believe. Yeah, I think it's only like when you are yeah when you send a message that gets uh, so basically when it's about to play that's when we initialize it. And I'll talk about the message sending stuff in a bit. Okay, so uh, oh no, let's finish up music tracker. Okay, release the sound. Play music from the beginning. Uh, play music from specified specified point in timeline. Uh, essentially, we're just storing the uh, timeline position, and if you play from beginning, it sets the timeline position to zero. Uh, from a specific point in time, it just uses the value that was stored. Music tracker updates. Oh yeah, so we we don't use for some of the things we don't use Unity's update command. Um, we just kind of manually call our own music tracker updates. Let's see. Yeah, it's like updated by the uh, the music tracker group.
okay, yeah. Then, you know, there's a bunch of logic for whether it's a one shot. If it is one shot, then it releases sound emitter right away. Clear music tracker data. Okay, so this is uh, this is to clear all the information. So the the timeline position, the parameters, all of that gets cleared. Uh, this is done when you quit the game. So when you when you're loading another game or when you're starting a new game. I where do we do the uh, do we change all the other parameters? Okay, yeah, we do it here. Okay, stop it with fade, stop it immediately. Uh, Story time and position. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's, that's the music tracker, right? So it's just... Uh, basically, uh, you know, it, at its very core, it is just giving us more control over a single FMOD event and lets us do music specific things like storing timeline position, playing the sound from the beginning, uh, so on and so forth. All right, so let me talk about it. So the music tracker group, what that does is it, it handles a group of uh, music trackers. You can see that's the list. Um, let's, let's come back to this. Okay, that's the music sentence. Oh yeah, extra data. I'm actually. All right, so you can see the parameters. We I didn't set that here. Uh, yeah, it stores parameters for everything, all the music trackers, and it, it actually shares it. But uh, like I said earlier if you pass a parameter to a piece of music and that music doesn't actually use the parameter, it doesn't make a difference. This is deprecated. Did I, did I write this? <laughs> no, we are using this. <laughs> And uh, here, let's add the music tracker group. Stop all music trackers in this group. Are we are we deprecating the music tracker group? Because it is definitely used uh, in a bunch of places. Hmm. Okay, I need you to Yeah, cuz it is definitely still used in a in a bunch of scripts. Um so if it's going to be deprecated, we should remove references to it. Okay, I think control music, stop all music trackers in this group. Um, is any music playing in this music group tracker? So yes, that's all fairly self-explanatory. Play one shot. Um, oh yeah, I did want to call it play ultimate one shot, but that, that's probably not necessary. It's uh, mostly because FBOT has the same name, but it does behave the same. Uh, right, and so what we do when we play one shot is we actually change the uh, we put we take the event path of the music played and we add one shot and put it in extra tracker data, and if it has and then it it looks that the uh, extra tracker data and if it if it finds that this line then it knows that that music has played. So we basically store. Um, strings and check those to determine whether music has played or not. 
send music message again. This will get to the uh, music message system, which I will talk about next. And on player enter and sentence region. Do, 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 do. Yes. So this used to be called on player enter level, but that's not. That got confusing because since the the whole idea of the music tracker group is that it works across multiple levels, it was like which which level are you talking about? Um, yes, that the colored comments. Somebody had a question about those. That is a Visual Studio plugin. I don't know the name of it, and I was actually trying to look it up because I wanted to add like additional. Um, colors but um anyway that, I'll worry about that later update music tracker group on player exit music sentence okay what happens when you exit the music sentence region usually it's to fade it out uh we use this so you would talk to the music tracker group to set the parameter values you can update all parameter values check and set if the state has changed Fully clears all data. Okay, this is when they're loading a new safe. Okay, so fairly straightforward. Mostly just kind of controlling the music tracker, uh, letting us know if if any music is currently playing, and which music sentence it is. Okay, so in Ultimate Music Manager, and this is communicating with the messengers, uh, which we'll talk about. So you can see in the music in the ultimate music manager oh right and we use music tracker group as a base class i should i should clarify that so you can see for example the idle and explore music that inherits from the music tracker group so what we do is every every kind of custom music sentence uh in the game actually just inherits from music tracker group and does its own thing because we will often want music to behave differently uh, okay but you can see it stores it keeps the music it has a dictionary of which music sentence is linked to which music tracker group All right we store the dictionary so during this, at the beginning of Ultimate Music Manager's life, we instantiate all of the music tracker groups and then we put them in the dictionary connecting the... No, wait, this one is level music. Where do we do the, the dictionary for... This one is level name to music sentence. But where is music sentence to music tracker group? Oh, never mind, it is here. <laughs> uh, yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah, no, 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 that is exactly where we're adding it to the to the dictionary. Yes. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, you can see. It's putting in the dictionary that's the the music sentence enum and then we instantiate the music tracker group the custom music tracker group and then what we do is also we create have another dictionary that's uh, linking the level names to the music sentence so that when you're in a level you can look up which music sentence is supposed to be playing. now these are all uh, these are all like one to one, you know, there's one level, one music sentence, one music sentence, one music track or group. Uh, this one, for example, this is the music sentence, music track or group. This one, we actually have multiple levels sharing one music sentence.
Okay, so that is, well, remind me to come back to the save load stuff. That that makes sense at the end once we've kind of gone through everything. Save load. Okay, but anyway, so I've talked about music tracker, music tracker groups, and then ultimate music manager, which is music tracker group manages the music trackers inside, and then the ultimate manager, music manager manages the music tracker groups. All right, let's talk about, okay, and let, let's go over some of, so for example, you can see this, uh, actually this is not the most interesting. Let me show you a couple of music tracker groups. Let's, let's talk about the one for zero, zero, zero. Um, so they each have, three. okay, here we go. This is, so zero, zero, zero is the first level in the game. And you can see here, we inherit from music tracker group, so it's got all the functionality for handling music trackers. And then we can customize all the different things, right? So we, uh, um, yes. Okay, right. So for example, this is a, a when when that stinger when you walk into the interior of the tower inside extra tracker data we add this string stinger has played and that and also main music but if if like essentially what, what what is going on here is we if you were to like load up the game but you hadn't gotten to the part that the stinger has played then it will make sure to play the first music. Otherwise, if you were to have already gone through that section and then return to the level, we don't play the music again. Because the the music for that level is there to complement the first time you step outside. And it all builds up to the stinger, but you know, we don't want that stinger to play every time you come back into the uh into into the level so um that that's whether or not the, we want the music to play each time you come back to that area is it depends on on that particular music sentence how that's designed um send music message right the singer has played and then here's all the logic so if it gets the message play main um then it, it plays the the main music of the air play singer it plays the singer for store singer, stop track music with fade. For store stinger. I think this is wrong. I think this is actually outdated, isn't it, Aaron? Because I thought we were First door singer is removed. Um, okay, so yeah, I actually this there's um we're changing things all the time. So yeah, this is actually this is no longer used in the game. Right, the uh, that that was a sound effect that we we had put in here, but it, it was more of a temporary thing, and uh, yeah, it didn't make sense that the sound effect would be done separately. But anyway, yeah, you can see when the when you send the message play singer, then the main music starts to fade out. So I, I actually think we shouldn't do this. I actually think. Um, it's like like basically what's going on is this one music's fading out and then this other gets loud and and that feels kind of weird i i feel like it, it should always be something more like that but maybe maybe that's something to do with the seek speed uh that larissa can tweak but anyway okay so we're, we're using this um this message system and then we store the info in the tracker okay now let's talk about so yeah 
that that's all all these custom music tracker groups uh let me see what's another good example 053 that's got a bunch of trees um right again uh you can see how the logic here is different right you got a different uh messages it's when the first tree is grown that then it plays this music when the second tree is grown, it plays that music so this allows us basically uh this is set up such that we've got a base class that does things all music groups want need to do and then if we need to customize it for a specific area which we often need to do we can just inherit from it and then add like the custom logic all right, now let's jump back into this level and we'll talk about the messaging system. Okay, so you can see here when you step outside, there's a music manager and it plays the main music. Um, is there a reason why though? I think this is actually a little bit too forward. I don't think you should see it until you get outside, maybe. Um, okay. Okay, so you can see there's a music message sender trigger. Um, basically, when you go into this, what it does is it finds, it talks to the ultimate music manager and it sends a music message. Um, and the ultimate music manager, it says like, hey, I want to send this message. And the message here is play main. Right. And you can see it in the title. Uh, it automatically names it. So you walk into this trigger and it sends this message play main to the ultimate music manager. What the ultimate music manager does is it then goes and it looks for the appropriate music tracker it's like uh so this guy goes hey play main alto music messenger alto music manager gets the message it looks up which level the message is coming from and it finds the appropriate tracker group in which case in, in this case that's zero 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 it goes here, right? Finds the music track group, in this case, 000. And it passes the message here, and that's where this happens. Send a music message. You know what, that should maybe be receive music message. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, uh, this is, this, this really, this should probably get changed to on music message received. It sends the music message and then that really should be on music message received. Yeah. Yeah, when when this gets the music message, uh, then it receives okay. If the message is play main, then it does this thing, okay. Uh, right, and then what we do is uh, 
these are so that that's sending the music message this is also sending this is setting a parameter similarly uh, it's slightly different it sets the parameter tells the ultimate music manager wants to set the parameter once again the ultimate music music manager looks up which music tracker group uh, this messenger is trying to talk to goes over there and sets the parameter right set parameter value cool um, okay so these are these are trigger based so you can see the the messengers they all inherit from a classes this took us a little while to to set up correctly they all follow this interface called i Whis music whisperer i couldn't come up with a better name but it is um, two things it's mostly just setting the object name uh, but the so music message sender trigger that sends a message when the player walks into a trigger box um, that's fairly straightforward the music parameter setter trigger that sets a parameter when player walks into a trigger area we've also got let me see where music whisper is used we also have music message sender chain listener this is a little bit different than the the triggers ultimately it's still just sending a message to the ultimate music manager but instead of having it happen when the player enters a trigger area it's when these uh power lines are are enabled so um let me see if I can show this here. This is um, so you can see here. There, there's a switch, a line, and a door, and that's like kind of a all the the faces of the of puzzles in Manifold Garden, right? You've got you got to put a cube here. This powers it on. The line pass transmits the power to the door, and then the door opens. And if you take the cube off, then it turns off. So again, that, that's a, this is a whole other system, but the line is part of a system called chainables, which allows us to uh, connect one after another until it gets to a chain listener, which in this case is a door, and that receives power. So um, But anyway, the, basically, so we have chainables and they you can determine whether they are enabled or not. And it's a bit complicated because, for example, this door, you might have actually two chains. Uh, and then in that case, the door only opens when both of the chainables are on. But, and if, you, if one of them turns off, then the door closes, right? So all that logic that's handled by the chainable system. So in this case, for... You can also have music that's tied to an action like that. So, for example, when a door opens, that sends a music, that, that sends a message. So in that case, there is the on-fill music message, which is when all of the chainables connected to it are on, and on-empty, which is when as soon as one of them turns off. And that inherits from chain listener, uh, so I didn't have to, like, handle all that all that logic, right? That That is the reason why we're using... Um, uh, 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 a music whisper interface uh, like originally I wanted all of them to inherit from the same class but there was just uh, you know the way things were handled was so different uh, between the trigger and the chain listener and and C sharp doesn't let you inherit from multiple classes so I just instead use the interface which is a nice way to to kind of you know, I can do reference and then keep track of like, okay, these are all the different things that have been written. So there's the music message sender chain listener and that depending on whether the lines are on, it sends one message depending on whether, or if the lines are off, it sends another. There is also same thing for music parameter setter chain listener. So that's parameter depending on whether the lines are on or off. And there's kind of this weird one, this tree growth activator um previously we were using the same script the music message sender trigger 
for all of these functions, then it just got really messy because it was like, it, you know, it said it's a trigger and it's got code for trigger, but it's not used like a trigger. Uh, this one, uh, and again, this, this interface lets us like, you know, customize the behavior very easily. But essentially, this one sends a message when a tree is grown. Uh, so you can see when during the initialize, this is, we have our own, we, we generally don't use start and awake. We, uh, we've got our own initialization step. Uh, so for all gameplay components, there's a step called initialize gameplay components and cache references and set of delegates. Uh, during this uh, step, it gets the tree that it's linked to, sets up the connection, the references, and then, you know, when that tree gets grown, it calls this script and it sends a message to the Ultimate Music Manager, which, as I said earlier, figures out which uh, music tracker group uh, it needs to talk to and then gets a message there. Then the music message, then the music tracker group does its thing. Uh, and does the music logic. So that is how things are set up. Uh, oh, right. And, and you know what? Finally, let's talk about the uh, save load data, which is, of course, uh, another massive system. Um, but we're not going to go too much into it. We're just going to talk about uh, how the music stuff relates. Okay. So we have, like I said, there's music tracker. Okay. So you've got fmod event and this is basically you know we've got one layer up um, oops, is uh, ultimate sound emitter you know what let me, <laughs> let me just do this properly okay fmod event one layer up you've got Ultimate sound emitter, which is just our own wrapper for fmod event, and then this has the music tracker, which uh, kind of just builds on the ultimate sound emitter, but includes functions that are specific to music. And the, the reason we we the reason why we don't combine these two is because ultimate sound emitter is much more generic. It also handles sound effects and that doesn't require all the functions that the music would need. Um, bunch of music trackers are then, you know, these are all sort of the same, but basically a bunch of them go together into music tracker group. And then you have a bunch of music tracker groups all going together into the ultimate music manager. Okay. And then in a scene, so that's that's kind of the, the hierarchy. And then in a scene, you have, you know, you're playing the game, hits a trigger, it sends the message uh, to ultimate music manager, which finds the correct music tracker group, which then does the uh, tells the correct music tracker to, to do its thing. So that's kind of how things are done. Okay, so how are we saving data? For part of this is, is it's, we, we have our own like Manful Garden. You can save the game at any time. Uh, we also auto save in the background and every time it saves, it does a persistent save. So it saves the state of every object. Like there's no, there aren't checkpoints uh you if you like bring a cube from one level to another and then save that that cube will will, will stick around um so we we save on the music tracker group level um okay so there there's basically this thing called the music tracker group save data uh, it's got, okay, which which music sentence it converts the enum to an end because you can't uh, serialize the enum. Um, and then it has extra data, right? It's got the parameter names, the parameter values. So it knows 
it, when you were to when you go back, uh, it can put the music back to where it was. The timeline position. Now, these are these all either fairly straightforward except for the extra data. Basically, extra data we it it can be anything, like uh, in in the zero zero zero. First, I think we want to talk about. So in 000, for example, the stinger has played. That gets put in extra data. So once the stinger has played, right, if it's play stinger, the stinger hasn't, if the stinger has played, then we add it to the extra tracker data. And then if you are to load, if you were to load the level again, it would check the extra tracker data to see if the string stinger has played is there. And if it is, then it knows that the music has played. If it isn't, then it hasn't played. So that's how we're handling saving and loading for the music. Uh, basically, just kind of, it, it, it's different for each, each music tracker group. Um, uh, in this case, it's like if the, like in zero zero, if it if it detected that string, then it doesn't play the music. Uh, for zero fifty three, because once you grow a tree, you can't ungrow it. Uh, what we do is when it, if the extra data contains that that string, then it knows to play the music, uh, because it'll play that music as soon as you enter the level. Because otherwise, you're not going to call that trigger this time in your playthrough. Okay, so that is saving and loading in music. Okay, we're almost done. I think what we'll do is we'll go through the same sequence now, except this time I will uh, show what's happening with our debug tools enabled. So yeah, I had to. That that's all the code. That's the architecture. Um, now you now when we're when we're playing through and the debug tools are enabled you can like actually see all the values change in real time and check the save data and after that uh, if there are any questions we'd be happy to take them Hopefully my, the renaming I did hasn't broken anything. Okay. Show debug tools. Um, okay, there's the music debug panel. Okay, so first of all, this is the, the first page of the music debug panel and you can see here, these are all the music sentences, all the music tracker groups. Um, it's, it's actually super small, but yeah, there's I Don't Explore, which is treated a little bit differently than all the others. You can see um, none of them are playing right now. And that is correct. So so there's no, there's no music playing at the moment. I know. Sometimes I, sometimes the, uh, The triggers are visible in the editor. This doesn't happen in game. Okay. So, all right. Uh, okay. So that there's the music debug panel. You can see the music for. You can kind of click on it for a specific level, so you can see the 044. Nothing is playing, right? There. Music off timer. Well, so this this is this is partly because the um, we haven't changed the data there. Uh, music save data. Um, oh no, it's broken. <laughs> of course it is. Um, all right. Well, the the music save data isn't as important, but that that was basically a way for us to you can just like look at the extra data, um, see what's going on there.
Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You are right. Uh, the the reason why the music data, the music save data is broken is because I we started up the game in um, in the editor from the scene. Like the the save data is only loaded if you start from the beginning of the game, which is correct. That is actually intended behavior. Um, yeah, but if you if you save, yeah, it's because if you if you start up a, a level in the scene, it doesn't automatically uh, make a save, which is which is intended. Uh, Uh, you know what? I'll just I'll just do it uh, a little bit later. Okay, so when the player walks out, you can see, right? This is starting to play. Okay, so that's the main track. These are this is the the current music tracker group. That is the name of the music sentence. These are the parameters: door closed, inside, layer trigger. Um, those are the shared parameters, okay? Uh, that's the stinger, which will have will play when the when you walk into the tower. Now it's it's white, which means it's not currently playing. Only green is the sound that's currently playing. Uh, and you can see the parameter for the layer trigger is at zero, okay? Right, and over here on the right. That's the idle explore music info. Again, that is its own music tracker group, but it's treated a little bit differently. So we have its own, own panel there. And then finally down here, that is the music, uh, the message history. These are all the messages that have been sent. So uh, let's see down here, right? The very first one, it, this is the frame rate. The frame count, the object name, music parameter, chain listener, door close. I guess it, it played, it sent a message when I opened the, the door. Um, set the trigger to one because I'm inside and then I walked through it. Oh yeah, so, so blue means it's setting a parameter. Uh, orange means it's sending a message to play music. I play main, and now you can see it's setting zero. So as I'm going to walk forward, you will see both um, blue parameter set text showing that number increasing, and you'll also see the number increase up here. So boom, that's gone up to 35. You see there, and um, 35 up here. See that number fading out? You can see that's going to go up to one. Um, or, or rather, it would have it would have gone up to one had uh, had the particle volume manager uh, not <laughs> throwing a bunch of errors. Um, <laughs> Okay, you know what? Let, let's start from the let's start from the beginning, and I will show you guys the um, the, the the save data working correctly this time. <laughs> now we're just we're keeping it all in one take. This is this is just part of part of development. Uh, I guess at this stage with the game, this size is always something is broken and everything is all, all interconnected. Oh, did you see that, that, that there's a missing texture for, uh, 
for that opener. Uh, that's a, that's a separate bug. It's because the um, it's because those starts start scenes are different and are not generated. Okay, so let's um. No, you should you should ask questions. Although anyway, if you guys have any questions about the about what I've said so far. Um, you know, okay, music message. Okay, yeah, so there you go. That's the music safety bug. So you can see, I can see all of the extra data that's been set. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, so right now, of course, it's a new game. There's been no data whatsoever, which is correct. Uh, what we are going to do is play through again to that, that level, save the game, and then we'll come back. Okay, so uh, let's enable our music debug panel and display the current music in the game um yeah the regarding frame rate there's some Unity problem where, like, once in a while in the editor, the game just runs horribly. Um, it, 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 it doesn't... It's not a problem in the build, um, but and I just have to restart Unity. Okay. So, no, the... It, it actually, it's running at 16 frames per second, and then the, the stream makes it worse, of course. Um, but no, sometimes Unity just does this. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hit save game. Oh, so does anyone know how to, like, not have Unity to show that no cameras rendering? It's pretty annoying. Save game. Okay. Now, if we go back to the music save debug panel... You can see that in oh um <laughs> uh, sorry it's actually hidden right Info panel. It was hidden right behind that. Okay, but yeah, you can see here. That's the that's the sentence. These are the parameters. Those are the values that are stored, and that's the extra data. Um, all right. So now, if I were to quit to main menu and start a new game. You will see that um, okay. Start, uh, yes. Oh, really? Warn if no. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't have to right click, but yeah, at the very top, one if no camera's rendering. You know, I've been using Unity for six years and I just learned I can do that. Um, okay, so this is a new game. If we check out the uh, music save date debug panel, you can see this, this is the, uh, right, that is the music sentence. None of the data is there. This is correct. It's a new game. What I am going to do now is I'm going to hit load game and I'm going to load the previous save. And then you should see the all the correct data. 99, that parameter should be set to 99 and the extra data should have play main and I think play, play stinger or stinger one played. Show a debug panel. Boom. There we go. Right? So it is, uh, 
it is working. Stinger has played. So this is, uh, we were having a lot of problems with FMOD before where it was like it, things weren't saving correctly and sometimes it's not clear whether it's like the music hasn't loaded, something's wrong with FMOD, something's wrong with the code, something's wrong with the platform. So writing all these tools now, uh, we're like, okay, well, the code is definitely correct. We're sending the stuff. We're saving correctly. Okay, so that is the um, the music system in Manifold Garden. Let me know if you all have any questions. We'll stick around for a bit. Yeah, it basically took us about um about a week to write this this latest version. I guess since this recording is also going to go on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can also leave a question in the comments. Heroes full. What were your your non-technical questions? What genre is the music of MG? Oof, I don't know. Ambient musical. <laughs> No, man, I, I went over the um, the music system in the game and we talked about like the architecture, the code architecture, how it's set up and like the depot tools and demoed it. Mm -hmm. We're planning to sell the original soundtrack alongside the game? Yes, we are. Yeah, we haven't started discussing that in detail. Um, yeah, mostly we've been putting our energy into like getting it to work in the game, but we definitely I think once that's done and when that's finalized, um, yeah, that is something we will look into. I guess probably the hardest part is like, you know, a lot of these, you can see all the, the music is dependent on your action. So not sure how to, it's an interesting challenge of converting that over to to a soundtrack that just got the music fixed yeah yeah hard check I thought you know when well my original plan for the game was to finish it in in three months and I had planned on doing menu, save system, and audio all in the final week. Because uh, it's like every game has them, and, and how hard can it be? And music has turned out, audio has turned out to be one of the most challenging uh, parts of the game, like the audio occlusion and sound design and... Uh, there's so much customization and, and especially for 3D, you know, like well, that was the, the safe system. We didn't think we would need one for music, but it's like, okay, well, if the player goes through this area and then comes goes to another and then comes back, you know, what's, what's um, you know, how do you handle that? Yeah, it took like a week to refactor the latest system. So... Um, Audio text probably one of the top two. Um, oh, level loader. I don't know. Level loader graphics. Those are probably the most complicated. Top top five for sure. What's the audio thing that we struggled with the most? Um, struggle with the most. I think maybe some of the implementation early in the earlier versions were really not that. 
like the very first version of the music system, I think I wrote it in one weekend and it was just so we would have something in and it did not scale very, very well. And we had like the logic, you, you see how each custom music tracker group like just has the logic and that's really clear to clear when you're reading through it. Like, okay, this one level, there are three pieces of music. Uh, like, here's how they're going to play. Do we even, I guess there is. Okay, so it's like I can see this and there's already a main track, first tree, second tree, third tree. We used to have all like the custom, all the logic for all the levels in one script and it, it was just a nightmare to maintain. Um, getting the uh, the architecture for this one, what, what I'm most proud of is probably the, the current architecture. Again, like, you know, I've explained the music sentence of the music tracker, music tracker group, and the Alta music manager, but that, that wasn't always there. And the way it was set up previously, it actually wasn't super clear what was causing the music to play, especially because we're using the message system. So one thing I don't, you know, I remember the first time I discovered delegates, I thought they were pretty sweet. You know, it's like, oh, okay, when this thing happens in this code, some other, um, this other code will do its thing. The problem though is it, it can be hard to kind of figure out the logic, right? Because the, I can't actually tell that this is, from the music tracker group. I guess the way we set up now with the dictionary, you can you can figure it out. Um, but that that logic wasn't super clear. And so it was like, sometimes it was the line that had the music that was like initializing it, but then you just had this trigger and it's like, I don't know, you know, we were using like the chain listener that was still using a trigger code. But you can see that the trigger once they have a box collider and that's set as a trigger and for a while we were using this the, what is now chain listener that we that used to be the same script except there just wouldn't be a box collider so I'm, you're looking at this script and it says like this object it says it's a trigger but there's no box collider and you're just like how how's that getting who's what's happening here uh, but now it's super clear. You can see it's like, okay, it's this line mesh, right? Like this chain listener, it's this line mesh here that's responsible for it. Um, so that means if I go into a level, I can just look at all the music message senders and parameter setters and know exactly how the music's going to get played out um, just by looking at this. I don't have to play it. I mean, I, I'd obviously, I have to play it to hear it but just from you know looking at this i can tell how it's going to work right here the player's going to come out it's going to hit 20 then it's going to like it's going to go up uh this one when they open the door that's going to play so i think getting that architecture in place i'm i'm pretty happy with it um <laughs> favorite way uh, incredibly painful way. All right. Well, I think I've covered uh, the the system and the code pretty thoroughly. Um, I think in the future we'll do another video on more, the more creative and design aspects. But for today, that was the. I just want to talk about the code architecture, the debug tools. Mm -hmm and how we're going about actually implementing the music triggers in the game. All right, I guess now we, we gotta go back and fix the, uh, <laughs> the other bugs. But yeah, well, if you enjoyed this, and this is partly for the, the YouTube viewers, but yeah, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, follow on Twitch, follow on Twitter, wishlist the game. <laughs> do all the things you gotta do, tell your friends. Uh, 
They make they make me say all that stuff. Okay. All right. I'm going to go edit this together and upload it on YouTube. Oh, yeah, that's right. The mailing list. And we are we are still on track to uh to finish the game in 2019. Uh we've actually made a ton of progress. I think where my biggest thing that needs to be done is the ending, and I just have not been able to find time to design it. It's actually the second version we had. We had one version of the ending, wasn't very good. Took it apart, redoing it, and I just need to finish that. Um, and then we're pretty much there. Okay, I'll see you all later.